another. In 1972, Misaki, a popular student at Yomiyama North Middle School Class 33, suddenly dies halfway through the school year. When one student continued to pretend as though she were still alive, so did the rest of the school. Graduation day, the principal even arranged for her seat to be included in the final photo. 26 years later, Koichi transfers into that same class and meets Mei, a girl who is seemingly ignored by the rest. When their classmates begin to die in gruesome deaths, part of a curse placed on 3-3, they work together to investigate the truth. In the year 1998, Koichi, due to family reasons, transfers to Yomiyama for his final year of middle school, but due to pneumothorax, he's hospitalized just before his first day. Reiko, his aunt and the sister of his deceased mother, points out his new school in the distance. Meanwhile, his father, Yosuke, is doing research in India. Three classmates, Kazami, Yukari, and Izumi, drop by to visit. Kazami and Yukari are class officers, while Izumi is in charge of countermeasures. They ask Koichi if he has ever lived in Yomiyama, though he isn't sure. Later, Koichi encounters a strange girl named Misaki Mei, carrying a doll to the morgue. He later receives a call from his father, who reveals that his pneumothorax is hereditary and tells him to enjoy his high school life. After Reiko drills in him the rules he must follow, he formally transfers into Class 3-3, headed by Shoji, the homeroom advisor, and Reiko, the assistant teacher. He spots Mei at the back, sitting by the window. The air is silent at first, but afterwards, his classmates warm up to him and ask him about his life in Tokyo. When Koichi asks about Mei, Kazami changes the subject and has Naoya show him around the campus. During PE class, he meets Ikuo, a classmate with a weak constitution. After he expresses his desire to run again, he retires to the clinic. He asks Yukari about Mei again, but she has a terrified look on her face. He spots Mei on the roof and visits her. When she realizes that nobody from class has told him anything, she cryptically remarks that 3-3 is a class close to death, and warns him not to talk to her anymore. On the way home from school, he spots Mei on the sidewalk, but when he looks again, she's gone. Despite being warned, Koichi speaks to Mei again and she tells him that things may have already begun. During art class, he bonds with Yuya, a gifted artist. Yuya extends him an invitation to the art club and while discussing the scream, Naoya joins in and offhandedly remarks that 3-3 is cursed. Before Koichi can press further, he spots Mei in an adjoining library and speaks with her. He sees her drawing a figure, which she says will have gigantic wings. Chibiki, the librarian, drives Koichi away. Later, he speaks about his experience with Reiko and expresses his desire to pursue a fine arts degree. Reiko is skeptical, but she tells him there is no harm in trying. He visits the hospital and asks Sane, a nurse he befriended, if any girl died while he was admitted or if she had seen a girl wearing an eye patch. Sane promises to investigate. The next day, Izumi and Yukari pull Koichi aside. Izumi interrogates him on his upbringing, confirming that he was born in Yomiyama. But after his mother died at childbirth, he spent most of his life in Tokyo. However, she can't shake the nagging feeling that she has seen him before. She continues and explains that she is in charge of countermeasures to protect the class. But before she can continue, Yukari and Yuya stop her. Koichi spots Mei and follows her to a store, but before he can enter, he receives a call from Sane, who reports that the girl who died was someone in junior high, an only child named Misaki. He walks into the macabre doll shop, which also serves as a museum. The receptionist, Amani, welcomes him in and offers a student discount. He finds a doll that looks eerily like Mei, and when it suddenly speaks, Mei reveals she was hiding behind it. She asks him if he still wants to know why she wears an eye patch, and she removes it for him. Mei reveals her green left eye, which she explains came from a doll that allows her to see things otherwise unseen. As she dons the eye patch again, Koichi realizes two things. Amani said that she had no other customers, while Sane said that the girl who died was an only child. He begins to call into question Mei's existence, but she begins telling him of Class 33's legend. There was a well-liked student who excelled in both academics and sports. When she suddenly died partway through the school year, a student pointed to her desk and pretended she was still alive. This behavior spread throughout the school, and even the principal arranged for her chair to be in the graduation photo. Later, it is said that Misaki could be seen in the photo. Before she can finish her story, Koichi receives a call telling him to go home. As he gets up, Mei mysteriously disappears. When it starts to rain, Yukari offers to walk Koichi home with her umbrella. When he asks about Mei, she tells him not to speak her name. When she and Oya learn that Koichi is aware of 3-3's legend, Reiko tells them to keep quiet for now. Koichi presses Reiko for more details, but she tells him not to take urban legends seriously. The next day, he spots Mei and meets with her again. He then receives a call from a distressed Naoya, warning him not to meddle with things that don't exist and promising to tell him everything next month. When he looks up, Mei is gone. Later, he receives another call from Sane, who tells him that the patient who died was Fujioka Misaki. The next day, Koichi leaves class to speak to Mei. She reveals that Fujioka Misaki was her cousin and someone she was close with growing up. He then asks her why they treat her as though she doesn't exist. She replies that it is precisely because she doesn't exist. 
Before he can process this, Yukari leaves class early. When she sees Mei, she dashes down the staircase. She trips, dropping her umbrella. As she stumbles, she's impaled on the umbrella, killing her instantly. After a checkup at the hospital, Kuichi has lunch with Sene to discuss the curse of 3-3 and the girl named Mei. She agrees to ask her brother Takaru, a student of 3-3, for more details. While walking home, he encounters Aya, one of his classmates. He saves her from a falling piece of glass, but the experience leaves her traumatized, and she goes hysterical about not wanting to die. He visits Mei at the doll store, and she says that it has already begun. She tells him that she won't come to school tomorrow, but when he asks why, a doll suddenly falls from a shelf, and Mei disappears. That evening, he tries to ask Reiko for more information about Class 3-3 and learns that she was once in that same class 15 years ago. She reminds him of Rule number 3, to always uphold the class rules, but she can't seem to remember exactly what those are. When he presses for more information, she snaps at him, exhausted and agitated. The next day, Izumi and the rest of the countermeasure committee are disturbed that it has begun. Because the principal keeps the curse under wraps, none of the other students are aware of it. Izumi blames herself for not coming to school on the first day, thus failing to warn Koichi. Koichi finally gets a hold of Naoya, who had earlier promised to tell him the truth. Izumi scolds Naoya for acting on his own, when Koichi suddenly receives a call from Sane. She reports that her brother refuses to speak about the incident 26 years ago, and upon mentioning the name Misaki Mei, he frantically avoids the question. Suddenly, the elevator cable snaps, and Sane is crushed to death, the sound of crunching metal heard over the phone. News of Sane's death spreads, and the mood in class shifts drastically. Koichi's grandfather says he's tired of funerals. During art class, Koichi wanders into the library and discovers that his mother, Ritsuko, was also in Class 3-3. Chibiki remarks that he once knew Ritsuko. Izumi calls Koichi and sends him to the faculty room, and quietly apologizes to him, saying that this is all for the good of the class. Koichi is interrogated by the police who are investigating Sane's accident. When he returns to the classroom, he finds it empty. Shoji tells him that Izami was selected to be the new class officer, and he sends him home. At the school entrance, he meets Yuya and Ikuo. Yuya explains that they were gone earlier for a meeting, and tells him that something unpleasant is about to happen to him. Koichi asks for a copy of the class roster, and Yuya agrees. Ikuo offers to tell him everything, but he suddenly suffers a heart attack and dies. The next day, Koichi is ignored by the rest of the class. He discovers a note left behind by Yuya, and he brings it to Mei, revealing that it is a class roster with her name crossed out. Koichi is just glad that Mei exists, and she invites him upstairs so they can talk more. She explains that, just like him, she was purposefully ignored by the rest of the class, beginning earlier in May. She retells the tale of Class 3-3's curse, recounting that after Misaki's death 26 years ago, an extra desk mysteriously appeared the following year, and nobody could figure out why. Those connected with the class began to die. May says that this extra desk belongs to a dead student. It is someone who has all their memories but does not realize they're dead. There is no way to tell them apart. No matter what classroom they transfer to or what they rename their class, the deaths always happened. But, 10 years ago, students found a way to circumvent the curse. By treating one student as though they were dead, they were able to prevent anyone from dying. Izami meets with the countermeasure committee and concludes that Koichi is not the dead student, since his hands were warm and he never lived in Yomiyama. Meanwhile, Koichi meets with Mei at her house and meets with her mother, Kirika. Mei takes him out for a walk and explains that the class decided to ignore him to strengthen the charm. Koichi says this is unreasonable, but Mei says they're desperate. Mei shows him her artificial green eye, made by her mother after her original eye was lost to a tumor. She shakes his hand, as starting tomorrow, they're now two of a kind. That evening, Koichi's father gives him a call. He asks Koichi how it feels to be back in Yamiyama after over a year. Koichi clarifies that he hasn't been here since he was a child, and Yosuke says, My mistake. The next day, Koichi fantasizes about dancing with Mei. He begins spending an increasing amount of time with her, promising to cook for her and making plans to visit an art museum together. They drop by the library in Michibiki, who reveals that the full name of the Misaki who died was Yomiyama Misaki. Chibiki himself had been the class advisor during that fateful year. Those two degrees removed from 3-3 students are at risk of dying, but only if they live within Yomiyama. After going through old school records, they discover that the survival rate drastically increased after the countermeasure was introduced. But in 1996, a student named Mami, who was the designated person, crumbled under the stress and demanded she be treated like she was alive. Thus, the deaths continued. Curiously, Chibiki points out that during her time as the ignored, Mami's name did not appear on earlier school records, despite having been a student there since 1993. Their name only returns once their time as the ignored ends, and memories of their time as the ignored are altered. Chibiki says that this countermeasure only has a success rate of roughly 50%. Koichi learns that in 1983, his mother was in Yomiyama to give birth to him, while Reiko was an assistant teacher for 3-3. 
That night, Koichi prods Reiko for information about 3-3, but she has difficulty remembering. The next day, Shoji stumbles into class and declares that their efforts are futile and draws a knife. Shoji kills himself in front of his class. Chibiki rushes in and tells Reiko to call the paramedics. Later, Chibiki speaks with Koichi and Mei, revealing that, prior to his suicide, Shoji smothered his ailing mother to death, unable to cope with the pressures any longer. Thus, they attribute these deaths to the curse. Koichi and Mei's existences are acknowledged again. Izumi warns Koichi and Mei that they may be unjustly blamed for the incident, and she, as head of countermeasures, will likely be blamed as well. Mei implies that Naoya might be the dead student this year, and they share a laugh at the grim circumstances. Koichi and Mei visit Shibiki, who reveals that Reiko also dropped by to discuss 15 years ago, the one instance where the deaths stopped partway through the year. He shows them 3-3's class record from 1983, revealing that during their class trip to Yamayama Shrine on August 8th, someone died on August 9th. But afterwards, the deaths stopped. What happened is a mystery, since attempts to recreate it failed. Later, Reiko announces that they will hold a class trip from August 8th to 10th. After receiving a call from his father, Koichi learns that his mother kept her old yearbook photos at her parents' house. Later, Naoi invites him to discuss something that concerns the fate of the class. When he arrives, only Izumi is there. She teases that Koichi might be the dead person, but she reassures him she's only joking. Tomoka, who works at the cafe, also happens to be Yuya's sister. One of her regulars used to be a student at 3-3. When asked about the curse, he reveals that he put a stop to it, but cannot remember how. Koichi is sent to ask Mei, whose mother was one of Matsunaga's classmates. However, Mei reveals she's going on a family trip the next day. She shows him the doll from before and explains that it is meant to be the stillborn daughter that Kiriko never had. When she learns that Koichi still has doubts that he's the dead student, she reassures him that he isn't. After learning that her former classmate Matsunaga may have the answers to their problems, Reiko agrees to accompany Koichi and the others to speak to him. The next day, she and the others travel to the hotel resort that Matsunaga works at. The drive out of Yamiyama is tense, and they breathe a huge sigh of relief when they pass by a gas truck unscathed. With the threat of death averted, Reiko pushes the car into a higher gear and begins yelling at the motorists. Along the way, Koichi learns that Izumi volunteered to be the countermeasures head because she could not allow such a curse to exist. When they arrive at the resort, Matsunaga is currently away, so they decide to head to the beach. But once there, Koichi meets with Mei. They have some fun together, playing volleyball, tipping over Reika's floaty, all while Misaki tries to build a sand mound, which is unfortunately washed over by a wave. Koichi asks her about her family, and she explains that her father is rarely home. They hold these family vacations on the off chance that he is. For lunch, Noya suggests they compete over who can gather the most ingredients, splitting into the countermeasures and non-existent teams. But it goes terribly, with Naoya on one occasion fishing out Izumi while Naoya catches a puffer fish. Luckily, Mei finds a small octopus. In the end, with their pathetic catches, the match is declared a draw. Reika did the sensible thing and bought meat and vegetables for them to enjoy. Matsunaga finally drops by, and Izumi and the others ask him questions about their fateful summer trip. He and Reiko are unable to remember anything specific, but he is sure that he left something behind for the succeeding classes to help them. When a sudden gust of wind blows their beach ball away, Junta volunteers to retrieve it. The air is tense, and while swimming towards it, a speedboat drives by, killing him. As they look on in horror, Matsunaga finally remembers he left it in the classroom. After the funeral, Chibiki tells the others what he learned from the detectives. The Junta's death was due to an earlier cerebral concussion he suffered before going on the trip consistent with the car sickness and inability to swim well. Thus, leaving Yomiyama without going to a hospital sealed his fate. Koichi awakens from a nightmare of the cursed victims blaming him for their deaths. He tells Naoya and Yuya of what Matsunaga left behind in the classroom, but they agree to keep it a secret for now from Izumi and the others. The next day, as Koichi and Naoya prepare to meet with Yuya, they encounter Yumi and Aya, and they reveal that they're looking for a way to stop the calamity. Upon arriving at the art club room, they meet Mei, who joins them in searching for the former 3-3 classroom. While rummaging, they discuss the seven mysteries of the school, and Mei teases that she often hears disembodied voices coming from a locked room. After a few mishaps, Koichi discovers inside a locker what Matsunaga left behind, a cassette tape. Elsewhere, Yumi and Aya part ways, the latter leaving Yomiyama completely. As they play the tape, Matsunaga's voice tells them he's about to tell them two things, his sin and how to stop the calamity. He recounts that on August 8th, his class advisor Koga took them all out to Yamiyama Shrine, believing that by praying they could end the curse. The class was skeptical, but it did not hurt to try. After praying, they were hit by a sudden storm. As they hurried down the mountain, two people died. Hamaguchi, who was struck by lightning, and Hoshikawa, who slipped and fell. But before Matsunaga reveals the most important detail, they hear a teacher approaching, and they are forced to hide. Naoya accidentally ruins the tape, but Yuya says it can be fixed. Elsewhere, a runaway digger crashes into Yumi's house, killing her brother. Aya, attempting to escape Yamiyama with her family, is killed when their car falls down a cliff. 
Izumi wakes up from a dream where she happens to meet Koichi for the first time. 3-3 visit a lodge for the class trip and they take a photo to commemorate the occasion. As they settle in, they meet Kinsaku and Keiko, the proprietors of the lodge. Naoya and the others play the tape again. Matsunaga's voice tells them that he got into a fight with a fellow student and he was accidentally impaled on a branch. In a panic, Matsunaga raced back to the lodge, terrified about the police finding out. But when nobody noticed his classmate's disappearance, he returned to the mountain, shocked that the body had gone missing. Strangely, his other classmates had no memory of this missing person. He concludes that the person he killed was the extra dead student. The only way to stop the calamity is to send the dead back to death. Koichi and the others are now faced with a moral dilemma. Even if they found the dead student, could they really kill a classmate? Over dinner, Izumi addresses the class, apologizing for her failures. She then singles out Mei and demands an apology, blaming her for interacting with Koichi. As Mei bows, Daisuke suddenly suffers an asthma attack, but his inhaler is all out, and none of their phones or landlines have any service. Jibiki volunteers to drive him down the mountain, and Mei thanks Koichi for standing up for her earlier. She invites him up to her room so they can look at his mom's old photos. They find her 3-3 photograph, with a blurry image of Misaki in the background and aged photos of Reiko. Koichi asks Mei about her family, and she says her mother's real name is Yukio, and she has a twin sister named Mitsuyo. When the two grew older, Mitsuyo had twins, one of whom was Misaki Fujioka. But when Yukio became pregnant and miscarried, they needed something to cure her ailing heart. Thus, the Fujioka family, going through financial distress, gave Mei to her. Mei discovered the truth in fifth grade, when her grandmother let it slip. She eventually reunited with Misaki, and the two bonded as sisters. For her 15th birthday, Misaki wanted one of the dolls in Mei's house, but she died shortly before it, thus why Mei brought the doll to the morgue. Thus the first real victim of the 3-3 curse was Misaki Fujioka in April, long before Koichi transferred to school. But the main reason why she believes he's not the extra person is her green eye, which allows her to see the color of death in others. When she confirms that the extra student is here with him today, Koichi asks her who it is. Before she can answer, Naoya barges in, saying that he has made a terrible mistake. Takako mentions that she knew a Misaki in elementary who looked identical to Mei but had both eyes. But Izumi says this is unlikely, since they would have been in different districts and the Misaki Mei they know lost her eye at the age of four. Naoya confesses that he killed Kazami after being certain he was the extra student. Koichiro encourages him that he might still be alive. And as Naoya leaves to search for him, a badly injured Manabu clutches Koichi's leg, warning him that someone has murdered Kinsaku and set fire to the kitchen. As they help him up, Koichi tells Izumi and the others that there is a murderer on the loose. They hear Takako shriek, and when they return to investigate, her body is gone. They encounter Yuya, who says that he had seen Kazami still alive, and reveals that he knows about Matsunaga's tape. Mysteriously, the tape is gone. Koichi tells him to split up and tell everyone to evacuate while they search for Reiko. Yuya and Aoya follow a blood trail. They find Keiko, wielding a butcher's cleaver. Koichi hears their screams, but they encounter a bloody Takako. After yelling out, Return the dead to death! She attacks Mei, but Koichi stops her. Takako escapes, and Izumi reveals that the two listen to Matsunaga's tape. She goes after her, but Takako makes an announcement and plays Matsunaga's tape, telling everyone to kill Misaki, whom she believes to be the extra student. Class 3-3 students emerge from their rooms to kill Mei, desperate to put an end to the curse. Reiko tries to calm the students down, but Yukito seemingly kills her when she attempts to defend Mei. Horrified, Koichi drags Mei with him to escape. Yumi, desperate to avenge her brother, chases them through a window, but she slips and falls to her death. While Yuya and Oya try to escape, Noboru and Makoto investigate a burning smell, and upon opening the kitchen doors, Makoto is incinerated. Koichi and Mei find a place to hide, but Takako suddenly stabs him. When she tries attacking Mei, she gets tangled up in cables, and chokes to her death. When Izumi discovers this, she flies into a rage and attempts to kill Mei, but she escapes to the upper floor, the staircase falling behind her. The fire begins to raise the building to the ground, and the students attempt to escape. Yukito, San, Sayuri, and Kenzo are crushed by a chandelier. Kenzo survives, but another pillar falls and kills him. Yuya and Oya escape through a window to evade Keiko, and Shibiki assists them by killing her. Koichi discovers Kyoku's dead body and encounters Aki, which he's killed by Kazami, who now turns on him. Reasoning that the deaths began as soon as Koichi transferred in, Kazami attempts to stab him, but Izumi kills him with a pole. She then tries to kill Koichi, but Shibiki intervenes. Koichi returns to search for Mei, and she finds her about to be killed by Izumi. He intervenes, and the beam under them collapses. In the struggle, Izumi threatens to kill him if he insists on defending Mei. The glass above them shatters, and Izumi recalls how she first met Koichi after accidentally throwing a can at him. She begins to die after being impaled with glass shards. She asks him if he remembers how they met, and when he shakes his head, she calls him an idiot. After being separated, Koichi receives a call from Mei, who says she is about to end it all. 
He hurries to the courtyard and is horrified to discover that the real extra person was Reiko. She explains that the extra desk was in the faculty room, and only 3-3 has an assistant teacher. Koichi tries to kill her himself, but when he hesitates, May says that the real Reiko died a year and a half ago. Koichi finally realizes the former signs. Reiko's fourth rule to call her Miss Mikami in school, his grandfather saying that he was tired of funerals, and Izumi saying she hit him with a can a year ago. His memories were altered by the curse. Koichi lifts the pickaxe, apologizes to Reiko, and kills her. Days later, Koichi and Mei meet at the cemetery and they bump into Jibiki. He reveals that Keiko and Kinsaku were Ikuo's grandparents. They became unstable after his death. After confirming the earlier deaths of Reiko, they realize only three of them can remember her or see her through the photos they took. On the way home, Koichi asks if he can call Mei sometime, and she says yes. He breathes a sigh of relief and wonders aloud that it is all over. Later, Yuya and Aoya leave behind a second tape for future classes of 3-3, telling them how to stop the calamity but warning them to properly talk things over so that there are no regrets. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification and leave a like to help notification and leave a like to help notification.